Hi, Oddings. It's your Ate Sapphire. I have two amazing offers from our sponsors, Purple and Scentbird. So stick around after today's episode to hear more. Hey, I'm Sapphire. Want to hear something scary? Life imitates art. The following story is based on real events that happened to Patrick. I used to love drawing when I was younger. Art class was my favorite, but I gave it all up recently. And if you experienced what I have, you'd understand. I first discovered my gift in middle school. Every week we experimented with different styles and they really encouraged us to challenge ourselves. One week, the assignment was to create a drawing with accentuated shadows and shapes. I ended up drawing a desert along Route 66. I'd never driven down it, but that's what came to mind. The next week, we had to cut out a photo from a magazine and draw around it. I found a photo of a random blue car and placed it in my sketch of another long desert road with mountains in the distance. The following week, we got to experiment with ink and quill pen. And no, I didn't draw another desert road. This time, I was compelled to draw a bird. I wasn't sure what kind it was, just a small generic bird. After I finished, I decided to add some more elements around the bird. I drew a window behind it, a table underneath it, and an oil lamp in front of it. My teacher was walking around the room and stopped at my desk. Interesting. Why is the bird inside the house? I don't know, that's what my body told me to draw. And that's how it felt whenever I made art. Like someone was giving me instructions and I was merely following them. I thought that's what inspiration was. I thought everybody felt that way. Until I got older. I ended up getting into my dream art school on a full ride scholarship. I was so ecstatic to continue honing my skills. My dad, however, was not. He thought art school would be a waste of time and that I should be pursuing something more practical. I didn't blame him for his opinion. He's from a different time. But it was a bummer to not have his support. We fought a lot because of this. It got pretty bad to the point where I moved out of the house without him knowing and into my boyfriend Adam's place. I wouldn't admit it at the time, but that's probably why my work during that period was much darker, more graphic, images filled with despair, deterioration, fear. But again, I believed I was just listening to that soundless voice inside of me, controlling my every stroke. There was one painting I made in particular that made Miss Bella, one of my professors at the time, very concerned. She told me to hang back after class to talk with her. Hey, Patrick, um, I don't want to worry you. You're doing very well in class, but uh, I wanted to talk to you about you. How are you doing? She asked, her kind eyes looking deep into mine. I'm fine. Why do you ask? I guess I'm just slightly concerned about some of the work you've been doing lately. I mean, don't misunderstand. It's all very beautiful but also very sad. I'm just drawing what my body tells me to draw. So your body told you to draw a self-portrait with monsters ripping you to shreds? <laughs> well, it's not really supposed to be taken literally. And a man drowning in a pool filling up with his own blood? <laughs> oh, that's my dad. He likes to go swimming, but that's not supposed to be blood. Look, you don't need to tell me anything you don't want to tell me. If you say everything is fine, then I believe you. I knew that my relationship with my dad hadn't been great lately, and maybe I was denying the responsibility of mending that relationship and placing it on this invisible entity that I claimed was controlling me. But I wasn't ready to make amends yet. I went back to my apartment and had this sudden desire to look at my old drawings. I think I wanted to remind myself of how art made me feel when I was younger. As I laid my drawings out on my bed, Adam came up behind me. He pointed at the car. Wow, so you ended up getting your dream car, huh? What are you talking about? That's just a random car. That's the exact same color and model as yours. I hadn't noticed that before. Adam then pointed at the drawing of the bird. 
Whoa, that's so weird. He pulled out his phone and showed me a photo he took of a bird inside of a house next to an oil lamp. It was nearly identical. My stomach began to hurt. If these drawings had somehow predicted the future, I looked over at the painting of my dad. No, that's not possible. This is all just a coincidence, I kept telling myself. There's no such thing as drawing the future. Mm. Then my phone rang. It was my mom. Pat, you need to come to the hospital right now. It's your father. I sped over there. It's a miracle I didn't get pulled over. The entire drive, I just kept thinking, please don't let him be dead, please don't let him be dead. I got to his room. My mom rushed over to me and held me. It doesn't make sense, it just doesn't make sense. Earlier that night, my dad was about to take a swim in the pool like he usually did, but when he didn't come inside after an hour, my mom went out to check on him. And that's when she found him floating in the pool that was slowly filling up with his blood. Somehow, his head was cracked open by a heavy object as he was in the water, and he drowned. There was a big rock at the bottom of the pool, so my mom thinks that was probably what hit him. But how? It doesn't make sense, Pat. After my dad died, I dropped out of art school and I vowed never to touch a pencil again. I was just a vessel, and something horrible was using me, and I, I couldn't let it anymore. I wasn't gifted. I was cursed. So tomorrow, my boyfriend and I are headed on a long road trip across the country. I'd never seen the desert or the mountains. I just needed to get away from everything. Maybe we'll move to another state. I just want to drive to a place far away where my stupid drawings can't hurt anyone ever again. Did you know that fear has a distinct smell? Don't let the monsters get you. Mask your fear with great designer fragrances without breaking the bank. Scentbird is a luxury fragrance subscription service for perfumes and colognes. What I like about it is that the bottles are small, so I can switch up my routine and try different ones without committing to a full bottle. If you want advice on what perfumes to try, you can take Scentbird's True Scent Quiz. For 50% off your first month, go to scentbird.com scary and use my code scary. If you're struggling to get a good night's sleep because of all the scary stories you listen to, unfortunately, I can't do anything about your nightmares, but I can recommend that you try a purple mattress. They're firm and soft at the same time, which sounds like some make-believe wizardry, but it's not. It's a brand new material developed by an actual rocket scientist. Seriously, these mattresses are like nothing you've ever felt before. They keep you supported and yet still very comfortable at the same time, and they're breathable, so you stay cool. So if you want to get a better night's sleep, try Purple for a 100 night risk-free trial. If you're not fully satisfied, you can return your mattress for a full refund. Every mattress comes backed by a 10 year warranty and is shipped to your home for free. And while they're at it, Purple will set up and remove your old mattress for you as well. You're going to love purple. And right now, our listeners will get a free purple pillow with the purchase of a mattress. That's in addition to the great free gifts they're offering site-wide. Just text SS to 84888. The only way to get this free pillow is to text SS to 84888. Message and data rates may apply. Thank you to all of our patrons. If you'd like to join our VIP program, visit patreon.com slash snarled. Want more Something Scary? You can hear more stories over on the Something Scary podcast, available for free on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. The links are in the description below. If you'd like to submit a story, send me an email at somethingscary at snarled.com. Like and share this video if it gave you the chills. And don't forget to subscribe to Snarled and turn on the bell for notifications. And if you dare, follow me on social media. Until next time, sweet dreams.